Overseas now, the UK's Prime Minister Boris Johnson and other senior members of the British Parliament have been barred from entering Russia. In a statement, Russia's Foreign Ministry said it had made its decision over the UK's hostile stance on the war in Ukraine. The British Prime Minister joins the growing list of Western politicians banned from Russia, including Prime Minister Scott Morrison, Labor leader Anthony Albanese and US President Joe Biden. For more on this, we're joined live by Professor Joseph Syracusa from Curtin University. Joe, great to be with you. Boris Johnson has been banned from entering Russia. What do you make of this decision? How significant is it? Uh, good afternoon, Gabriella. Well, I tell you what, it's, um, it's a severe blow if you're interested in diplomacy. Uh, Boris Johnson has been trying to get back on the world stage with uh, global diplomacy and the rest of it. So, uh, you know, he, he's front and center. And so it, it's important in one sense. He's now elevated with President Biden and former Secretary of State uh, Hillary Clinton, who have also been uh, uh, found persona non grata or not a welcome in, in Russia, along with, uh, I think, 12 other people. But, you know, it's, it's not expected in one sense, I'm sure. Uh, going to Russia was not in Boris Johnson's diary. Uh, on the other hand, it um, shows you how angry uh, the Russians are. And I think the last American that I know is in Russia is the U.S. ambassador. Uh, so uh, there's a whole lot of people that have been cut off from a dialogue with Russia. So uh, that's very sad in terms of a diplomatic solution. But uh, uh, I, th I think it shows you, it measures the temperature in Anglo-Russian yeah. relations and Russian relations with the rest of the world. So uh, I think it's, uh, it's a harbinger of worse things to come. Well, Russia's formally warned the US and NATO of unpredictable consequences as a result of, its, of it arming Ukraine. What can the West expect its next steps will be? Well, we're, we're, we're not real sure. And since we've allowed uh, Putin to set the table and to uh, direct traffic for the past couple months. The Americans don't want to uh, uh, overly exercise him. That is, they don't want a direct fight with uh, Putin or a direct fight with his troops, which uh, Biden believes would, uh, would result in World War III. Though there are, are people surrounding the president who, uh, who are not as old as he is and do not remember the Cold War or mutual assured destruction, we have no trouble poking the bear. And so they're pushing the, the Russians as much as possible. So, you know, in, in that sense, uh, um, the, the president uh, uh, can't expect some bad news. Now, look, the, the Russians could introduce uh, uh, nuclear weapons in different places. They could, re they could return them to, uh, uh, to the borderlands of uh, Sweden and Finland or in the Baltic area. They can threaten that kind of thing. They could reintroduce uh, uh, maybe nuclear weapons or, or, or Russian troops in uh, Africa, the New World, that is Venezuela or Cuba or something like that. They can make a lot of trouble in other places. But, uh, you know, it's quite clear that uh, uh, Putin has got some things in mind. And, you know, uh, we'd like to hear that uh, people are telling the story now, that he's surrounded by people who are not telling him the truth. Actually, I think he is surrounded by people who are telling him exactly what they are seeing. And, of course, now we've got that uh, flagship of the Black Sea, which is at the bottom of the Black Sea, which is going to complicate matters even worse. Can you talk to us about those people surrounding Putin? Is there pressure on him to do more, not less? I think there would be enormous pressure on President Putin from below, that is, from Russian society, to do something about it. Look, the sinking of a ship, which is, is, is really an extension of one's flag, it's an extension of one's uh, national territory, is an attack on one's territory, uh, is, is a very serious thing. Uh, when I was younger, uh, uh, an attack on uh, two American ships in the Gulf of Tonkin led directly to American direct involvement in a war with North Vietnam. In my parents' generation, the sinking of the hood in the North Atlantic uh, led Franklin Roosevelt to uh, uh, go to war later on with, with, with uh, Nazi Germany, you know, and in 1898, the sinking of the Maine became the rallying cry. Uh, the sinking of the Maine in Havana Harbor became the rallying cry for the war party in Congress that wanted to go to war when most people didn't want to go to war. So these, these ships, uh, they take on enormous importance, not to mention it was a damn good ship. You know, it's 15,000 tons. They don't make them like that anymore. In fact, they don't plan to make any more cruise missile ships like that. And um, I think what's interesting about the sinking of this, and it's quite clear that, uh, that there's a couple of Ukrainian uh, missiles that brought this uh, ship down, is that we're, uh, Gabriel, we're looking at the future here. These are modified 
modernized anti-ship missiles. These are the exact same things that the Chinese would be using to sink American aircraft carriers in the South China Sea. I mean, we're looking at the future here because all the great boats, all the great ships are now under the threat of this new kind of, uh, of, of, of te uh, technology. So uh, I, I think we're getting a, a little look into the future. And in any case, uh, uh, to sink a ship like that is very difficult to explain to your people. You can argue about who is a war criminal and what is genocide and what is not genocide. You can have several stories about Maripol or Kiev. But to tell you what, you, you can't explain what happened to a 15-ton ship and why it's at the bottom of the Black Sea. I mean, you got to get your story straight. And Russia certainly uh, has no story to say to its own people right now. But I know that, I know that the Russian citizens, the Russian people, are, are demanding some, some retaliation here. So... It's, it's more than Putin running away with Russia. I think he'd be under enormous pressure from Russian Russian population to do something about this because uh, not to lose a warship is a big, big deal. Professor Joseph Syracuse, we have to leave it there. Thanks so much for your insights this afternoon. Okay, thank you.